everyone. Thank you very much. So we've been talking a lot in this conference about what we need to do and why we need to do it. I want to talk a little bit about how we could do it. Um, we're currently in Iceland, one of the well-being economy government's uh, countries. I am from Denmark, as you can see, which, where this debate hasn't really been going for so long. So we're trying to change that. I hope that our other Nordic fellows in Norway and Sweden will join as well. Finland is already part of it. Um, and hopefully everyone else will join as well. The thing is, you're not going to win by simply being right. You're going to win by being organized. And so, let me see if this works. Last year, in 2023, 23, we had the Beyond Growth Conference in Brussels. And this, to me, was a really, really seminal event. Um, I've been part of the pluralist economics movement, the movement for a new economy, in the past more than a decade. And here we had Ursula von der Leyen opening the, um, the, the discussions in the European Parliament with more than 7,000 attendees. This they called the Woodstock of post-growth. It was cross-partisan. Members from uh, every group in the European Parliament helped host it, and the debates were lively. They fit very well with uh, what came out of the IPCC reports a little bit earlier as well. I have to click a lot here. <laughs> so before this event, there was this open letter posted by 400 experts. These were academics and they were think tanks um, and other civil society organizations. And they basically, the message I took away from this was that all of these different voices, you know some of them, we've spoken about the donut um, economics, we've spoken about Mariana Masucato and mission-oriented economy and so on. In this letter, they all come together and what happened at this conference in Brussels was that there was a convergence towards asking for us to transition towards a well-being economy. Basically, the letter here says that the science is clear. Um, there is no empirical basis indicating that it's possible to globally and sufficiently decouple economic growth from environmental processes. <laughs> there. And the crisis we face mean that we have opportunities to create a new system, a well-being economy. So we've been working with this definition in Denmark where we, we think of a well-being economy as an economic system that provides current and future generations with the opportunity to live good lives within planetary boundaries. The key word here is within. That changes everything. That changes how we do policy. That changes how we think. That means we need to apply systems thinking. We can't just think of health as a silo. We can't just think of environmentalism as a silo. We have to think of our economy as embedded in our society and our society as embedded in our nature. That goes across every single sector. So what we have done in Denmark for the past year is we have tried to organize. I represent the um, think tank Vela Wellbeing Economy Lab. And apart from that, we uh, contribute to the Wellbeing Economy Alliance Danish Hub with six other organizations. And for the past year before we launched, we launched the think tank in February and uh, soon after also the Wellbeing Alliance Hub. For the past year before that, what we were really trying to do was reach out to the entire network, the entire movement, the climate movement, the um, different social movements in Denmark, and have conversations about what we're trying to do, why we're adopting this framing, why we're working with the well-being economy per se, because most of these groups know that we have some fundamental problems, we have crises, and that these are interconnected. But they're not really clear about how do we address it. And what I think the well-being economy gets right is that we need to address the root cause of these crises, which is our economic system. We need systems change. 
And so this is a whole new language for a lot of people. This is very new, and that means you need different actors in the movement, in the network, in order to organize effectively. So the, I see the role of our think tank as working for advocacy, as trying to bring all the brilliant ideas from this room, from other countries abroad, from academia and from research, into the policy sphere and create policy proposals and policy briefs that fit into the everyday lives of politicians and public um, civil servants. Whereas what the Wellbeing Economy Alliance is trying to do is to mobilize, is to bring everyone on board, is to, to basically invite, be inclusive, talk to communities, talk to different labor unions and so on, and, and really create this movement of movements um, as we need. And we really try to, to promote um, what we call movement generosity. Because this is not really about any of these individual organizations. This is about the problems we're facing and how we're going to solve them together. So in late April, the largest newspaper in Denmark, Politiken, they ran this campaign. And in it, we kick-started it with an opinion piece, an open letter, that called for a uh, well-being economy. And so this shows how much agriculture is in Denmark. That's all the red. Uh, there's quite a lot. There's not so much forest and so on. Um, and it ran on the front page, and we had featured articles every day. I have to rush. And it also featured on their building. So just a week ago, a bit more than a week ago, two weeks ago, we had this really big conference with um, more than 1,000, 1,500 attendees in Copenhagen at the University of Copenhagen. And here we brought together um, more than 1,000 participants. We had 30 different sessions with 44 partners from across different sectors, with politicians, with academics, with firms, with civil society organizations and citizens, trying to kickstart these conversations and trying to create a reference point for what a well-being economy is so it will not be well-being washed, like we know from greenwashing, and it will not be captured by one political party that can then make it theirs and make all the other political parties drift away. Because I think everyone who know, works with politics knows that this really needs to, to also represent a grassroots movement and not just be part of the normal debates between left and right. And I am out of time. <laughs> yes. Thank you.